Hello and welcome to Retro Tech 100. I'm going to review the C64 Mini. I know I'm late to the party, but I've got this for Father's Day. I mean, I'm in an hour about getting one, and Father's Day seems the appropriate time. Yes, I've already got a Commodore 64, but why not get the Mini as well? We're going to unbox it, show the contents, I'm going to update it because I hear there's a few updates now, play some games, and then try and load some games from USB, because I hear that's a thing you can do. Okay, let's open the box. First, let's have a look at the packaging. It's a lot smaller than I thought the box would be. I saw this in uh, Mankind or Menkind, no gadget shop a couple of weeks back. Didn't really notice how small the packaging was. Here we have the features high definition output at 720p via HDMI, pixel perfect display, got CRT filter options, game safe functions, two USB ports, plug in a USB keyboard, and uses a home computer with C64 Basic. I had a second joystick. Supports software updates by, by a USB flash drive. Here's the back. Some of the games that you get. I've not long had my Commodore 64 running to where I can load games, so a lot of these games I've not played anyway. So that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Right. That's pretty much the packaging. I'm dying to get into it. Ah. Look at this for a nice packaging. Take it, and you lift the top, and voila! And you have the Commodore 64 Mini, or the C64 Mini, and the joystick. Cool. Cool. It's got a bit of weight to it, but I know seeing other unboxings and somebody who's actually opened this, there's some weights inside. I take it so it's not sliding about. So a really nice case, there's your two USB ports and your power button. Power in HDMI. And that's the back of it. And that's it really for that. And we have power lead. You don't get a USB plug with this. HDMI lead. Stick. I heard a lot of people say this was actually quite rubbish, but I've never had a Competition Pro. It's not clicky, that's for sure. There's no micro switches in there, but uh, the design's nice. It's got one, two, three, four. It's got eight buttons in it. It's very. I'd say it's comfortable, but uh, yeah, it'll be a. Aftermarket mod a couple of months down the line on that sucker. We'll have to see. But well, it's very attractive. Put that there. And then get your little quick start guide. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares about reading the guide. So that's what it looks like. Let's see what it plays like. So this is what it looks like when it starts up. You've got your games along the bottom and you've got a little snapshot of each game and a little blurb on the side. For the games we've got Alley Cat, Anarchy, Armour Life Competition Edition, Avenger, Basic, we're going to come back to this, Battle Valley, Boulder Dash, Bounder, California Games, Chips Challenge, Confusion, Cosmic Causeway, Creatures, Cyberdyne Warrior, Cybernoid, Cybernoid 2, Deflector, Everyone's a Wally, Fire Lord, Gribbly's Day Out, Hawkeye, Heartland, Hero Robotics, Highway Encounter, Hunter's Moon, Hysteria, Impossible Mission, Impossible Mission 2, IO, Jumpman, Mega Apocalypse, Mission AD, Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Nebulous, Netherworld, Nobby the Aardvark, Nodes of Yesod, Paradroid, Pitstop 2, Ranarama, Robin of the Wood, 
Rubicon, Skate Crazy, School Days, Snare, Speedball, Speedball 2, Spin Dizzy, Star Paws, Steel, Street Sport, Street Sports Baseball, Summer Games 2, Super Cycle, Temple of the Basified Trilogy, I think that's right. The Ark of the Esod, the C64 Hall of Fame. My friend Rudin Every Demon is on the C64 Hall of Fame and does gameplays videos of the C64 Mini. You won't see very many great gameplays on my channel, but you will on his. So the link's down below to his channel. And you've got Thing Bounces Back, Thing on the Spring, Trailblazer, Uchimata, Iridium, Who Dares Wins, Winter Games, World Games, Zynapse, and then back to Alley Cat. But first, before we play a game, I'm going to update the firmware, and I suggest you do also. Um, it helps with some lag issues you've got between the sound and the video. I know it helps in it. Some games, but not all games. I've not played this very much, so I'm learning as you are. It's very easy to upgrade the firmware. All you do is you go to the C64 Mini website, download the latest firmware, go to the settings, go to system information. It sees that you've got a firmware update on the USB key that I've plugged in the side on the free USB port. You go to apply, press apply. And it does it for you. And you're all up to date. It's as simple as that. Let's play some games. There's a lot of games I've not played on um, C64 because I've not had the C64 that long. And I've just got a tape deck for my actual C64, Commodore 64. So um, let's give Cyberline a go. I can't say I'm. Um, quite happy with this joystick, it's not great. Um, a lot of people say it's awful. Let me know if you've got a C64 Mini, do you use the official joystick or do you use something different? Give you a couple of recommendations I should look out for. I mean people say there's lag, like, I'm that poor of a player, I don't think I'd notice anyway to be honest. I don't know if it's more in certain games or... I'm using the 720p HDMI telly and it looks really nice actually. I don't notice any lag really on games. Uh, game over. So uh, on the official C64 mini controller there's a menu button, just hit the menu. And you've got save load game. You've got virtual keyboard and you've got exit game. I haven't played Cyberline Warrior. It's a lot like um, like an early Turrican, really. Took some killing. What I find exciting about this is playing a lot of games that I've never played because when I was a kid I had Amstrad. Um, I've got a Spectrum now, but I don't really know what the good games are. I've never really looked into what I should be playing, what I shouldn't be playing. So I don't know if this is a selection of the best games. I really doubt it. I guess it depends on what they could get for licensing um, the company who made the Z64 Mini. But I think uh, the price it is... I think it's definitely uh, can't get me kind of price. Now with the advent of the SNES Mini, the C64 Mini, the Mega Drive Mini, we might see a lot more mini consoles. And to be honest, I'm looking forward to it. Seriously, enjoying most of these games. Let's try something else.
the save state, you get four for each uh, game. So all you do is you load into the save state there. And when you want to get back to the save state, it's there for you. You just load it in. Very handy if you're uh, such a poor player as me. See what I mean? Now the C64 Mini can load ROMs from a USB key. You can load single ROMs, or there is a way to do D82 disk image files that Paul Smallman from Paul is the Best UK YouTube channel has shown on the RetroTech 100 Facebook group. Um, he might be doing a video in the future. Go over to his channel and ask him to do it. He's shown me how to do it and everybody else on the group. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate uh, them running on the C64 Mini. It's a bit awkward. Apparently, they're going to update this um, in a new firmware update for the C64 Mini. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to just put loads of ROMs on and load them from there. But I'll demonstrate how it works at the moment. It's quite awkward to load these uh, multi game images. But what you've got to do first is have the uh, D82 on your USB key. I think there's a C64 mini group, and they've got quite a few on there. Uh, multiple games on one D82 image because it will only let you load one game in at a time. But this is kind of a workaround. So the thing you have to do is to load into Alley Cat first, then you have to exit the game. Why this has to be done, I'm not really sure. Then you need to go to Basic. And if you're smart enough to have a USB hub. This is a lot easier, but I don't, so I'm going to have to use the virtual keyboard to type in the run command. So you type load quotes, star quotes, comma 8, comma 1, and press enter. Then you type run and press enter. And then you've got this menu. So you've got games here. So you can have multiple games in the one image, as it were. So if we get rid of the virtual keyboard, and we'll go to Rambo. And it will load. By the way, this is the first time I've done this and it's uh, worked straight away. It will load like it's actually loading the game, funnily enough. And here we have Rambo First Blood Part 2. Now there are some compatibility issues, uh, namely multi load games and the joystick 2 port problem. But people are working on it, so you never know. Let's give this a bash. Right, that'll do. There's absolutely no lag whatsoever. I need to find somebody to kill. So what I think of the C64 Mini is totally worth buying. There's loads of great built-in games. It was very straightforward to put the ROMs onto a USB key and uh, they're going to make it better. Yes, the joystick isn't great, but it's not terrible either. So I definitely recommend to go and buy one today. This is RetroTech 100, I'll see you next time. Come in, Mr. Man, I'm gonna kill ya. Where you going? Where you going?